Hi, and welcome to the next installment of our shellcode obfuscation series. In this installment, we're going to be taking a look at something known as a Caesar cipher. So a Caesar cipher is a simple substitution cipher. And you may already know about it if you haven't heard of it. It is also known as a ROT13. Uh, however, this goes way back to the days of Julius Caesar. And supposedly this was invented by Julius Caesar as a way of protecting his communications. And the way it worked then, it was simply a ROT3. So it would just rotate the alphabet by three. So if he wanted to write an A, he would write a D. If he wanted to write a B, he would write an E and so forth. And that's simply what a Caesar cipher is. It's a substitution cipher where the alphabet is rotated some amount of characters. We can do the same thing with shellcode. We can implement that kind of cipher routine and rotate our value. So for instance, if our first byte is 0x00, zero zero zero, we'll make it simple, and we're doing ROT13, then uh, 0 plus 13 uh, is going to end up being, what is that going to be? 0x12, right? We moved over 13 characters or 0x13. So uh, it's going to be a simple cipher. It's very easy to implement. Uh, pretty easy to detect just looking at it visually, at least with written word. And it's something that children can usually solve, but we'll take a look and see whether or not computers can detect this as well. So we're going to hop over to our VM here and we're going to take a look at this code. So we can see here that this is some pretty simple Python code that we have here. And this Python code, let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so this Python code here is we implement a Caesar routine that takes a list of shellcode. And for each byte in that list of shellcode, it's going to add 13. So this is going to be a ROT13 type of implementation. And because we're dealing with shellcode values that have to be between 0 and 256, right? So we only have 256 possible values. I should say that's between 0 and 255. We have 256 possible values. So if when we add 13 to our shellcode byte, we exceed 255, it means we've gone past the end of our alphabet that we can use. We're going to subtract 256 from that number. Otherwise, if everything's fine, we're just going to take our number, add 13, and place it in this shellcode list, which is going to be our new list. And then we're just going to print out some shellcode. So let's take a look at that here. So if we just run caesar.py, we see now that uh, we have some output. And if we go back and look at our original shellcode, we can see that this shellcode started with FC48. I actually added a 0D in there just to uh, uh, test some things. Let's take that out so we actually have our normal shellcode. Let's run this again. So our first few bytes are FC4883 E4. Get used to seeing those. We'll see those a lot in this series. And when we run our Caesar cipher on it, we come out with 0x9, 5590F1. So this is definitely different, right? Like we have modified our shellcode. Now, if we were to go over to a Windows VM and take a look at this. So this is that shellcode that I have already uh, generated the Caesar cipher for. So we can zoom in on this a little bit. We can see 0x9, 55, 90, F1, and so forth. To make use of this, we're going to create a new array. We're going to create a new array that's the same size as our shellcode originally, 593 bytes. We're going to loop through the bytes in our Caesar array. And if we... Uh, subtract 13 and we're less than zero, then we'll add 256 onto that value. And then uh, we're going to print that out. Uh, 
And we actually have some code here to execute in here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that from this particular example. We're going to compile it. Before we do that, I do want to point out one thing. You'll see this printf statement here. Uh, the reason that's here is because Defender was actually detecting this particular routine here. And it wasn't necessarily detecting the shellcode. It was detecting this routine to change or to decode from our Caesar cipher. And as a result, that printf statement that's in there is enough to break up the signature so that Defender doesn't detect it. So we're going to go into our Caesar directory. We're going to compile that program. We're going to run it. And you can see now it prints out the appropriate bytes for our shellcode. So it works exactly like we want to. It starts out FC 4883E4, and it ends with that 56FFD5. So that is exactly what we want. It is working like it's supposed to. Now to see if Defender detects it. So Defender doesn't think that there's any kind of problem with this file. So that's good. So let's go ahead and take a look at VirusTotal. I'm gonna upload our program here to VirusTotal, and we're going to analyze it. VirusTotal is going to submit it to a bunch of different antivirus and EDR engines to determine whether or not it thinks this is something that's malicious. It does take a few seconds to a minute to run. It's got to submit these samples to, or run it through all of these different engines. So you can see here, Scored an eight. Eight of 72 security vendors detected this as malicious. No sandboxes detected it as malicious. Now that's because we didn't actually try to execute our shellcode. All we did was print it out. However, we see that you know there are some engines here like AVG and Google and Avast and SecureAge. They detect this as some type of malware. So it worked okay. Only eight of 72 engines detected it. So ROT13, simple ROT13 encoding was enough to fool this particular program, or rather to fool these engines. So it's not a perfect routine. Uh, it's not something that I would necessarily recommend using, but it is something that you could use. It, it's not the worst example we're going to see in this series. So with that, that's going to conclude our demonstration of the Caesar cipher. You can find this code on our GitHub. The link will be in the blog article that goes along with this video. And with that, thank you for joining and we'll see you next time.